I grew up in Nice Town, um, not too far from, from here. In Nice Town, there was a saying at one time that there's nothing nice in Nice Town. You have a whole bunch of people offering you drugs, guns, and, and just a way to go back to jail or die in them streets. Growing up around here on the other side of the bridge, um, we didn't uh, see a lot of people uh, doing the right things, let's just say that. We hadn't really seen many other people in our family or even in our community that we knew of that were college graduates. When I was in elementary school, my mother told my brother and I that we were going to college. I did very well in high school. I actually got a scholarship for um, a local university. Four years into the five-year program, I had gathered experience through my co-op, and I was offered a great job. When I started working, time just did not allow for me to complete the degree. I'm grateful that I found out about WGU where I could take classes that fit my schedule. It's not only did I walk away with a degree, but I also walked away with a lot of certifications. Shane runs our information technology division, which is a really complex and challenging set of activities. I am the vice president of information technology at a company that drives growth to every corner of Philadelphia. It's rewarding every day to know that I'm making a difference. I heard in a poem, if you hang around wolves, you'll learn how to howl. If you hang around eagles, you'll learn how to soar. Um, Shane is an eagle. Even at a young age, he was always trying to figure out how he can help others. He is truly an inspiration to everybody at PIDC, and I think now through this mural, he's gonna have the opportunity to be an inspiration to everybody in this whole community. It's my hope that people will take a look at this, learn about Shane's story by reading the plaque, and be inspired. It feels so good to see him up there, and then to think about the road he has traveled. I'm just so proud, very proud. He, he turned out pretty good. You cannot drive around Philly without seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of murals. And they tell a story, and it's a neighborhood story. They're important because they tell the story of Philadelphia. They tell the story of the community. And what he shows is to people that they too can do it. A future generation will see that someone just like them can make it. Someone just like them has a story to tell. And maybe it'll spark something in them to say, that's his story, so now I'm gonna write mine. I chose WGU because I really enjoyed the ability to work at my own pace and from home. Earning my degree has put me in the direction I need to be in order to be a really valuable member of uh, the type of company that I work for now and want to continue to work for. I'm really thankful to WGU for helping me get there. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the University of You.
Before I was a nurse, I started out as a nursing assistant and I also joined the military at the age of 17. In 2000, I got a really good opportunity through the military to go to a civilian program to become a licensed practical nurse. And I did that for about 18 years before I finished up my degree with WGU. My name is Andrew Nagel. I'm a registered nurse with the Indianapolis VA and I got my BSN from WGU. In the United States military, I was initially trained uh, back in the 1990s. It was called a 91 Bravo, which was a combat medic. I served in everything from combat support hospitals to uh, ambulance companies. Uh, I did a lot of instructing, and so that kind of brought me to 22 years, and after 22 years, I felt it was finally time to retire. Working at the Indianapolis VA as a registered nurse is outstanding. It's an amazing place to work. I kind of am specialized in that I follow congestive heart failure and COPD patients specifically. Working for veterans, taking care of veterans, working amongst veterans because a large portion of our working force is veteran also. You know, that as much as anything has kept me in touch uh, with my former career in the military and it's been wonderful. For me, the rewards have been being part of a team that goes out and gives vaccinations to patients who are stuck in their homes and can't get out to hospitals or clinics. And they are so thankful. I can walk into a veteran's home and we may come from vastly different worlds. Our upbringings might be different, we might be from different parts of the country, but because we have both served our country, we have that commonality. And as a nurse, that can be a very powerful thing because it helps build that nurse-patient relationship. And they'll chat your ear off. I mean, they're just happy that you're there and so thankful that you brought this medication out to them that's gonna help them you know, save their life, hopefully. Now is a great time to be a nurse. You're gonna feel good about what you do at the end of the day because you're helping people who need help. Once you've experienced the benefits of WGU's affordable, personalized approach to getting your degree online, it's natural to want to tell everyone you meet. Now, there's an easier way to let friends and family know about WGU. 
Refer a Friend is a platform that makes it easy to tell friends and family about the benefits of WGU and earn rewards. Sign up just once to get a personalized link that you can share with as many people as you want on blogs, emails, forums, and your favorite social media platforms. You can track how many people have checked out WGU from your link and earn cool WGU gear in the process. More referrals, more rewards, more convenient. Sign up today to refer a friend and help us change people's lives through education.
from the Farmers Coliseum at the Indiana State Fair Park. This is the 2022 Western Governors University commencement in Indianapolis. This ceremony is for master's degree graduates. This is a live broadcast and will be available for replay on YouTube and WGU's website. Hello, every Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 89th commencement for Western Governors University. I'm Allison Bell, Regional Vice President at WGU. Welcome to Indianapolis. Graduates, yay! <laughs> Graduates, families, and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this special occasion. Our ceremony is being recorded and streamed live. A special welcome to all of our online viewers joining us across the country and around the world. We thank you for your respectful engagement in today's ceremony. And if you are able, please stand for the processional and remain standing for our national anthem.
Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red Bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled And the home of the brave. Please be seated. Good after good morning and welcome everyone. <laughs> I'd like to thank Tracy Tabaki of Westfield, Indiana for performing our national anthem this morning. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy is a registered nurse whose 18 year nursing career in the Indianapolis area has focused on caring for patients with mental illness. She is currently a nursing education specialist for behavioral health at Community Health Network. She obtained her, uh, obtained her BSN and MBA through Western Governors University. <laughs> Tracy has enjoyed singing throughout her life and is the lead singer of the local band Rogue Heart. She, <laughs> she is married and has three children. Tracy dedicates the singing of the national anthem to her late grandparents, Joseph and Elsie Haas and Ivy and Doris Lott. Thank you again, Tracy. It's my honor to convene the 89th Western Governors University commencement. Please know that the safety of our graduates, guests, faculty, staff, and all attending or supporting this commencement is of utmost importance. We thank each of you for taking the precautions necessary to allow us to host this event safely. In case you haven't heard, this year we are celebrating our 25th anniversary at WGU. In just 25 short years, we have had the privilege of helping many graduates find new pathways to opportunity through higher education. In our first 20 years, we recognized nearly 100,000 graduates. And now, just five years later, we have exceeded 285,000 graduates. We look forward to continuing our tradition of breaking tradition as we work to expand our impact in the coming years. To commemorate this special year, each of our graduates here in Indianapolis received a silver cord to wear on your regalia. On behalf of the entire university and our board of trustees, we welcome our honored graduates and congratulate you on completing one of life's great achievements. Congratulations to you all. Graduates, today marks a significant milestone in your lives. It represents an accomplishment, but also countless challenges overcome. WGU was founded to serve night owls, 
those who work diligently to earn their degrees while keeping their commitments to families and jobs. All of you have overcome so much more by reaching this milestone during a pandemic. You have demonstrated your dedication, persistence, creativity, and resilience. This achievement allows you to advance your careers and improve your communities in ways that are both measurable and immeasurable. You join only 13% of adults in the US who hold master's degrees. Many of you are graduating today with a family member. We offer special congratulations to those of you who are sharing this accomplishment today with a loved one. WGU is grateful to be recognized year after year as a military-friendly university. We are especially proud to honor the military members who are graduating here today. We thank you for your service to our country. You may have noticed that our military graduates are proudly wearing red, white, and blue cords today to symbolize their service to our country. We thank these brave and selfless patriots. Will you please stand now to be recognized? Also joining us today are many of our Western Governors University faculty and staff. Please join me in thanking them for their dedication and commitment to your success. Thank you, faculty. Thank you, staff. I'd like to share some facts about today's graduating class. 38% of you today are the first in your family to earn a college degree. We extend a special congratulations to you. Your average age is 38 years old, the youngest is 19, and the oldest is 80. Never stop learning. 73% of you are women. The average time to earn a master's degree was two years and eight months. 38 states are represented here today. The state with the most graduates, with 400 in attendees, is, of course, Indiana. Our graduate who traveled the farthest to join us today, more than 3,100 miles, is from San Francisco, California. So some fun trivia I discovered about this venue is that, now get this, both the Beatles and JFK have appeared here. So when sharing about your commencement today, you can share that fun fact and you are in you know, a hall of greatness. Uh, we thank you for your dedication to being here today. You work diligently to reach an educational milestone that will change the course of your own history and influence future generations. Thank you for allowing all of us at WGU to play a part in the fulfillment of your dream, and it has been our privilege. And now we have the honor of hearing from two of your fellow graduates. I'm delighted to introduce Janetta Brown, Master of Business Administration from Illinois. And then we'll hear from Hannah Tina, Master of Science, Management, and Leadership from Indiana. Go oh, Hannah. Please welcome Janetta. Um, before I get started, I just want to make an acknowledgement here. Um, Earl, can you please stand, please? Everyone, this is Lieutenant Colonel Earl Anthony Freeman, who is also graduating with his master's, but has foregoed his celebration to be here with us. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hello, my fellow night owls. It is such an honor to be here today. Not just because I'll be graduating with my master's in business administration, but the true honor is to be here speaking to everyone that has made sacrifices and accomplished so much just across this stage. Every one of us has, to, I'm sorry, every one of us has a story of the challenges and tribulations that we have gone through just to reach this goal. And it's a privilege to be able to share my story with you. As a child, I always knew I wanted to be either a teacher or an accountant. I wanted to be a teacher because everyone learns differently. Not everyone learns by reading books or writing things down or just by listening. We all have our special ways of learning and retaining information, and I want to thank WGU for understanding that. And I wanted to be able to open the eyes of other kids that, learned, that didn't learn the traditional way. But I also wanted to be an accountant. Not only because I was good with numbers and research, but also because I wanted to be able to dress up, wear the suits, wear the high heels, and go to an office. Obviously, the heels won. <laughs> while, my, while I had my goals set out in front of me, as we all know, life is just one big plot twist after another. Right after I turned 15, my whole world was turned upside down after the loss of my mother. Being one of seven kids without a mother is really hard, but what eased some of that pain was having a big sister that steps up and takes control. At the age of 25, my eldest sister took on two teenagers, a nine-year-old and a 10-year-old, and raised us. Even though she had her struggles, she made sure that we were provided for and that we all knew that we could be whatever we wanted to be. I don't know where I would be without her, my other four sisters, and my one brother. Thank you, Angel, for raising me. Thank you, Etonette, who's watching, for mentoring me. Thank you, Natasha, for being my shoulder to cry on. Thank you, Virginita, for being my twin and my other half. Thank you, Derek, for always understanding me. Thank you, Christina, for listening when I needed to vent. At the age of 18, while a freshman in college, I found out that I was pregnant. I ended up dropping out of college my second semester just um, to pursue a full-time career to raise my son, always with the belief that I would return to school later. At the age of 25, I was married and had my second son two months before I turned 30. Less than a year later, I was divorced. Between the ages of 22 and 35, I tried multiple times to, um, to continue my education, but for one reason or another, it just didn't work out. Either didn't, I either didn't have time to commit to attending lectures and doing hours of homework while also working multiple jobs, or it was just too expensive. After my divorce, my life became about working and my boys. Joshua and Noah, and you too, Trevor, are my world. I started low, at a low level on an accounting, um, doing accounting work, and at the age of 19, and built it up over the last 20 years. I was being passed over for promotions, being told that because I don't have a degree, I am not eligible for a higher position, but also hearing, oh, a degree doesn't matter, just your experience. But then being told that, being asked, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> but then being asked to train a person that has a degree, but doesn't have real life experience or the real business experience that I have, which left me feeling frustrated and humiliated. It wasn't until I started a temporary to permanent position at a company that the head accountant took me aside and told me that she saw potential in me. Liz ended up taking me under her wing, mentored me, and became not only my best friend, but a second mom. And it was, if it wasn't for her pushing, bullying, and nagging, I wouldn't be here today. In the words of Mark Twain, the secret of getting ahead is getting started and Liz is the reason I got started. Her dream was for me to take over her responsibilities. She told me that she wanted, to she wanted to retire and that she wanted me to take over her position at the company, but to do so, I needed my degree. That very same night, while at home watching TV, I saw a commercial come on with a certain owl, we all know the one, <laughs> and that's when I said, you know what, let me give this a try. I was so fortunate to get the best mentor 
who pushed me and helped me get through my bachelor's degree while working three jobs and raising two boys. And I will forever be grateful for Julie, who I love and adore, for telling me that I will be crossing this stage whether I like it or not. No, even if it meant she had to drag me across it. <laughs> but then again, life gave me yet another plot twist. And in February of 2020, we lost Liz to cancer. But I was determined not to let her down. And in June of 2021, I graduated with my bachelor's, in, my bachelor's degree in accounting. With her, my mom, my sisters, and my children in my mind, I decided to continue at WGU with my master's degree. And that explains why I am here today. While our stories might be different with our trials and our struggles, and we took whatever time we needed to get here, the one thing that we have in common is that we made it. And I am so proud to be one of you. I am proud to hold my head up high and cross this stage with my fellow classmates. I am here to say we are WGU Night Owls, we are graduates, and we are proud. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Hannah Tina, and I am the proud mother of an amazing little boy who now has a mom with a master's degree. <laughs> I am beyond blessed and thankful to be speaking for you today. So I officially graduated back in December of 2020, so I can't believe that we are finally here in person. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about what I'm doing with my degree, about my future, or about work in general. I'm here to tell you that no matter the circumstance, no matter your obstacles, no matter what stands in your way, you can achieve anything. As many of you can tell as I walked up here, I'm very short. I'm 4'11", on a good day. And if you asked my doctors, I'm more like 4'10", 4'10 and a half. And when I was 19, I weighed about 115 pounds soaking wet. So, I decided to join the military. <laughs> Even though I come from a large family of veterans, including both of my amazing parents, everyone around me was a little surprised that I decided to join the Army. Day one of basic combat training, I was told by my one and only female drill sergeant that I would never make it, that I was too small, that I was too weak, and just overall not physically or mentally strong enough to make it through. I didn't know at the time if she was just being mean or if there was a motive behind it. Well, 22 weeks later, I graduated one station unit training as a military police officer and held the top PT score for 16 out of the 22 weeks. I was so proud of myself, and not so much just by graduating, which is a huge accomplishment in its own, but for proving her wrong. <laughs> and to this day, she is one of the most important role models in my life, and she pushed me harder than anyone ever has, and has made a huge impact on the way that I handle adversity. I've been in the military for almost 11 years, and I am still the shortest person to walk into the room, every time. But those around me know that I am a force to be reckoned with. That's only one instance in which I wouldn't let my obstacles stand in my way. No matter what anyone said or thought, I pushed myself harder than I ever believed that I could, and I fulfilled a goal and a dream of mine. Now, in the past couple years, we have all seen circumstances out of our control that could have stopped any of us with no questions asked. Between COVID-19 hitting us hard all over the world, to civil unrest, an economic roller coaster, and so many other things that would have been legitimate reasons for any of us to give up on our paths. We all stood tall and finished what we started. During my time at WGU, I learned about leadership, management, marketing, data, all while taking those pesky assessments and writing those papers that never seemed to end. 
But mostly, WGU taught me more than the curriculum of my degree. I learned perseverance and resilience when facing obstacles, patience and how to handle failure when my assessments got sent back, teamwork when I had to work with a group of four people all across the country, and once again, they proved to me never to give up on my dreams. Thank you, WGU, for teaching me lifelong lessons that I will take with me forever. And the last thing, thank each of you for being here. Our family and friends who had to deal with us while we slammed down and mumbled obscene words to our computers. <laughs> to the faculty and teachers for guiding us to reach our goals. To our amazing mentors for being that shoulder to cry on and that person to vent to. <laughs> and to each of you graduates, thank you for showing me that I am not alone and that no matter what circumstances, that there are people out there that work hard to succeed. Congratulations, we're finally done. <laughs>Thank you so much, Jeanetta and Hannah, for being here today and sharing your stories with us. Jeanetta, like so many of us, you've gone through many struggles, but the one thing you didn't do is give up. I couldn't agree more with the Mark Twain quote you shared, the secret in getting ahead is getting started. And as we say here at WGU, it's never too late. Congratulations. And Hannah, you are a force to be reckoned with, all 411 of you, right? <laughs> we, we actually have different ends of the spectrum problems here, yeah. <laughs> and in true Night Owl fashion, you continue to break down barriers, and no matter the circumstances, you keep achieving the most difficult of goals. Congratulations to you. Now, I'm pleased and super excited to introduce our commencement speaker, Spencer Pacinger, a Super Bowl champion linebacker turned television writer and producer. Spencer brought his own poignant story of living in South Central LA and playing football at Beverly Hills High to the hit series, All American. Spencer developed the award-winning show about being an outsider in two worlds, and he serves as your show's producer. Spencer grew up amid drugs, gangs, violence, and poverty in South Central LA with education-focused parents and a dream of going to college. He was offered the opportunity to attend the elite Beverly Hills High, going on to lead the football team as captain to an undefeated season. A scholarship to the University of Oregon followed, where Spencer also became team captain and was part of the team's first undefeated season. Graduating with a bachelor's degree in economics, he began his NFL career with the New York Giants, winning Super Bowl 46 in his rookie season. Spencer played seven seasons in the NFL, retiring in 2017 to pursue his dream of developing television and film projects focused on the black experience in America. Now a sought after writer and producer, Spencer has written and developed various concepts under his Moore Street Productions banner with Uninterrupted and Deviance Media. He is currently writing a film for Ron Howard and Brian Grazer's Imagine Entertainment. Spencer serves on the board of KIPP Public Schools Black and Latino Leadership Committee with the goal of creating programs for KIPP's South Central youth. He also serves on the board of Lyft City Works Council. Spencer is also a co-owner of Hilltop Cafe, Coffee and Kitchen, a fast casual eatery with allegiance to underserved communities. Please welcome today, Spencer Pacinger. Thank you, Manny. I'm very nervous right now. This is my first commencement speech, so bear with me. <laughs> first off, I want to thank Sarah Van Winkle, 
Scott Baker, and the entire WGU staff for bringing me here today. Congratulations to all the graduates who have reached this milestone and to the family and friends who have supported the graduates, I commend you. My name is Spencer Pasinger. I'm an ex-NFL athlete turned TV and film producer. In 2018, after playing seven years in the NFL, I chose to retire to produce a television series loosely based on my life growing up in South Central Los Angeles while attending Beverly Hills High School. The show is titled All-American, and we're in our fifth season. Thank you. <laughs> we're in our fifth season with our spinoff, All-American Homecoming, entering, entering its second season. If you haven't, if you've watched even a second of All-American, thank you. And if you haven't, hopefully something I say here today compels you to dive in. Indianapolis holds a special place in my heart. On February 5th, 2012, I capped off my rookie season with the New York Giants, who defeated the New England Patriots at Lucas Oil Stadium in Super Bowl 46. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Playing in the NFL and having a television series has brought me immense joy. But I'm not here to speak about my highlights. I want to share some of the decisions that helped shape my life, including one that occurred during the lowest point of my career. One of my favorite quotes is, use what you have to get what you want. This simple, to-the-point quote leads me in all my decision-making. Whenever I set a goal, I take inventory of what resources and assets I have at my disposal. I can turn anything into one big puzzle, because I've always been attracted to learning how systems work. It's not enough for me to see the finished product. I'm the type that needs to look under the hood to understand how the parts equal the sum. But what happens when those parts don't always add up? I'm sure some of you walking across the stage today didn't have a clear plan of what it would take to graduate from WGU. Having to balance work, family, and social life to attain a higher education, that will never be a smooth road. To all the graduates, all of you are here today because you made a decision about your life and career. Whether you were unfulfilled with, whether you were unfulfilled with your past or simply wanting more out of your future, you decided to come to WGU because you felt there was something within reach worth attaining. It's no coincidence that, the, that WGU is home of the night owls. When I think about the late nights and early mornings, the endless mounds of homework, and the never-ending never balancing act of likely being a parent and a student, the sacrifices you all had to make weren't acts of selfishness. These were decisions made for your sons, your daughters, and your significant others because investing in yourself ultimately has a ripple effect among the people you love. Decisions like these remind me of my grandparents, Carter and Lacey Pesinger, who in the 1960s decided to send their four boys across town to Ralph Waldo Emerson Middle School in hopes for a better education. Now, why does this matter? Because in 1969, the students of Beverly Hills High School petitioned the school district for integration. The students at Beverly felt their worldview was limited due to the lack of interaction with people of different backgrounds. So the school district did a year-long assessment of Los Angeles schools and found one school with a population of black students capable of handling the transition to Beverly Hills High School. That school was Ralph Waldo Emerson Middle School. After my grandmother got wind of the proposal integration program, she lobbied for her eldest son, Carter Pacinger Jr., to be enrolled and luckily he was accepted. After a few years, my father and his three brothers were all attending Beverly Hills High. Now, if you've seen All-American, this is a much different origin story than how I ended up at Beverly. But going to Beverly Hills High School broadened my scope of the world as early as 13 years old. And not for the, the conviction of my grandparents to want better for their kids almost 60 years ago, I would not be here talking to you today. But my grandparents, weren't the, my grandparents' decision wasn't the only deciding factor in my journey to Beverly. When it was time for me to attend Beverly, the school district I was currently in would not grant permits to any students attempting to go out of district. The intention was to force good students to stay, a local, to stay local to raise overall test scores across the district. After my mother, Autumn Pacinger, got word of this, she took action. She grabbed Beverly's permit papers, told me to get in the car, and drove to the superintendent's office. What happened next is like I've seen out of a movie. My mother double parked the car, bypassed security, and swung open the door to the superintendent's office, who just so happened to be on the phone. What came after are words I will not repeat today, <laughs> but it resulted in the superintendent signing my permit papers to attend Beverly Hills High although I'm sure he would have done anything never to see my mom again. 
<laughs> Both my grandparents and my mother's decision to be unwavering in pursuing better opportunities for their kids are at the core of me being here today, as this messes up. <laughs> as I'm speaking to you now, I'm thinking of the children in the crowd watching their parents, or their mothers, their fathers, their uncles, their aunts walk across the stage today. Your decision to attend WGU will impact them in ways you won't fully understand for decades. But know this moment is now a part of them, and it will contribute to their confidence when they decide to take strides parents, we parents have only ever dreamed of. I'm often asked how I went from playing in the NFL to writing and producing All-American. This career pivot didn't start with a proclamation or a vision of the future. It began with a single decision to be of the best of my position. See, every athlete's dream is to make it to the big leagues. But once you get there, the next best thing is earning a starting spot. So entering my third season with the Giants in 2013, I trained harder, I studied longer, and I even tailored my diet with the sole focus on winning the starting real linebacker position. And guess what? By the end of 2013 camp, my dreams had come true. I was a star high school wide receiver who converted to safety and then linebacker in college. And five years later, I'm being named the starting world backer for the New York Giants. Fairy tale stuff, right? Wrong. The defensive coaches entrusted me with the headset, meaning I had to call the defense and make corrections based on what the offense showed. So imagine me in a chess match against guys like Tony Romo, Peyton Manning, and Cam Newton. We started the season 0-6. This resulted in sleepless nights, peaking anxiety, and the never-ending fear of being cut. Although I knew it wasn't solely on my shoulders, I took responsibility because I felt I was letting my team down. The dream I had as a kid to be a professional athlete was overshadowed by the nightmare of being a starting linebacker. I wasn't having fun anymore. Deep down, I started believing that voice in my head that questioned everything. Now, why am I telling you this? Because the only thing that brought me joy and quieted that voice in my head was going to the movies. Sitting in a theater with my water, my popcorn, and my raisinets allowed me to escape the pressures of the NFL. Eventually, we made a few trades, I gave up the headset, and we ended the season seven and nine. But through it all, I still went to the movies. And after a while, I became interested in writing my own stories. So from 2013 to 2017, if I wasn't on the field playing football, I was in a the movie theater or teaching myself the craft of writing screenplays. See, sometimes the road you commit to isn't always the path you'll end up going down. I'm arguably the only professional athlete you'll ever meet that will openly admit they did not want to be a starter. But this dark moment in my life opened my eyes to a new goal worth conquering. After four years of learning my new hobby of screenwriting, a friend of mine read my work and shared it with his friend, who had a friend that worked for Warner Brothers. This led to writing a one-page document that began my pivot into All-American and what I call my first career. I think about that person I was during the most depressing parts of my life, and I smile. Often we are taught to shed old skin or do away with anything that doesn't serve us anymore, but I keep that 25-year-old kid in my heart because he had to go through all those dark moments for me to be standing here talking to you today. When I talk about using what you have to get what you want, sometimes the resources and assets you have at your disposal won't get you to your goal. But that X factor is a feeling you can't shake in your gut. It's your first thought in the morning and your last thought before bed. And as I look into the crowd today, I believe many of you know exactly what I'm talking about because it was that feeling that allowed you to start climbing, knowing you would figure it out on the way up. In closing, I have a call to action for all the graduates. After you receive your diploma, you hug your family and your friends, you go out to eat and do all the fun things that come with today. When you get a moment, when you get a moment to yourself, close your eyes and remember that person in you who decided to go after the goal achieved today. I want you to thank them because at some point, the person you were became the person you are now. And that person you were loves you for sticking with it. And as you continue through life, reaching new highs and accomplishing new goals, always remember it started with a single decision to commit. And I promise you, the person who made it is smiling as they watch it all play out. Thank you.
Spencer, your, your story of perseverance and, and putting in the work to achieve your goals and dreams is incredibly relevant, especially to all of our night owls here today. We are grateful to have you here with us today. We were grateful, grateful to hear your story. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. I can, one more round of applause for Spencer. Thank you. And now for the moment, uh, Dr. Lucas Cavalli will confer degrees. Thank you, Marnie. Uh, graduates, you've been sitting a little while, so first and foremost, start your engines. All right, all right. We are now gonna recognize each of our master's degree graduates who are wearing a hood bearing the color of their discipline. So, would the candidates for master's degrees and educator endorsements please rise? That means stand. All of you, not just the College of Health Professions and the Levitt School of Health. Come on, come on. They need, a, they need help, come on. Everybody stand. Man, I, I guess I said start your engines and nobody was listening, but that's okay because it's upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the member governors of Western Governors University that I hereby confer upon each of you the master's degree that you have earned. This includes those of you with the Master of Arts, the Master of Arts in Teaching, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Education, the Master of Science, or the Educator Endorsement with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations and welcome to the community of innovative, bold, and credible professionals. All right, you can do what you want, which is sit down for just a little bit. Now, the following leaders from each of our colleges will invite the graduates to the stage for their moment in the spotlight. And I would uh, encourage you to not bring milk to douse yourself while you're up here because we don't have enough plastic. First and foremost, we're gonna have Margaret Simona. She's the Vice President and Dean of the College of Business. Secondly, Kimberly Mao. She's the Director and the Associate Dean of Academic Programs for the Michael O. Levitt School of Health. Thirdly, we'll have Paul Bingham. He's the Vice President and Dean of the College of Information Technology. And bringing up the last, we will have Dr. Aaron Popham, who is our Academic Vice President and Dean for the School of Education. Margaret, the stage is yours. Congratulations to our College of Business graduates. This is now your moment to shine. So please rise and at the direction of the marshals, come on up to stage. Um, so you have your moment in the spotlight. Thank you, everyone. Megan Fry, Andrea Whitmer, Zachary Loca, Alexandra Bechtel, Jacob Hatton. Jill Sinowick. Brandon Richardson. Amelia Chapley.
Scott Strother. Kenneth Matano Wendar. Bethany Strother. Amy Mardiki. Jenna Nagel. Chad King. Hannah Tina. Timothy Scott Cohee. Janata Brown. Harsha Chaitana Mapakishi. Tracy Tabaki. Amanda Tirado. Brian Mueller. Timothy Kearney. Peggy Regis. Solomon Tuwar. Larissa Peterson. Kyle Lowry. Eric Gabus. Alexander Trowbridge. Jimmy Wright. Amanda Moeller. Jolie Wright. Brittany McDonald. Destiny Dickinson. Danae LaFleur. Sahara Blunt. Amanda Rakes. Donald Scott Connerly. Isherika Hawkins Bumpers. Ashley Paris. Shelby Stanley. Jasmine Meeks. Janet King Hyder. James Beland. Evelyn Schroeder. Lindsay Jackson. Christopher Roberts. Timothy Staggs. Laura Fisher. Darla Pemberton. Nathaniel Bohannon. <laughs> Leslie Stout. Maria Kivenke. Jennifer Hunt.
Travis Lakes. Charlie Chambly. Chelsea Stevenson. Troy Graber. Daryl Collins. Charisma Parson. James Phillips. Melissa Black. Julie Zafang. Caitlin Derringer. Louis Charles Ford, Jr. Amy Rolfing. Matthew Ziegler. Lewis Wheeler. Kath Kristen Boggy. Ashley Casey. Christina Van Dyke. Paul Gerns. Jocelyn She. Stephanie Drudge. Kimberly Collier. Brianna Pittman. Kelly Jones. Carrie Jones. Ann Hannon. Kimberly Harrison. Autumn Henry. Nicole Gill. Gregory Michael. Sherry Dubois. Laura Martin. Brittany Tea Garden Butts. Melissa Rhodes. Tabitha Barrow. Adiemi Awe. John Melton. Sarah Beal. Kelly Ednier. Karen Burling. Betts Berg. Sean Long. Roderick Miles. Casey Laddick. Gamar Grant. Pia Gabriel Pody. Mm. 
Leatrice Caldwell. My Huang Frenkri. Amanda Cooper. Brittany Dixon. Richard Field. Evan Davis. Alharath Abu Khadija. Rodriguez Lombaso. Brandon Reed. Siza Satterfield. Timothy Martin. Ian Mullen. Danielle Stringfellow. Angela Loretta Wigfall Mack. Latoya McCall. Matthew Van Horn. Tyler Donmoyer. Brandy Splitter. Delvin SMA. Wendy Lipscomb Hatcher. Michelle Holtkamp. Amanda Dortzbach. Shantae Davis. Lisa Foreman. Megan Hawk. Brittany Mitchell. Tiffany Dorman. Amy Davis. Yash Yuahar. Mark Stoffel. Abdul Munaf Shafi. Awujula Itua. Matthew Miller. Maria Pasternak. Joy Zoe Hampson. Babukar Sise. Alexandria Lynn Stanfield. Russ Clinton. Sunil Singh Gasawale. Juliana Burrell. Diana, Diana Feliciano. Laura Franklin. Anna Seaton.
Daryl Thomas, Jr. Che Elvis. Alfred. Sandra Beck. Sibu Sisiwe de Belli. Karen Denise Goodlett. Amber Ramsey. Deanna Hill. Mandy Franks. Aaron Freeland. Julie Yang. Sandra Trimbella. Monique Little. Erica Bruner. Ozias Sasu. Marjorie Acosta. Ade Ronker Johnson. Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Business. It is my privilege to congratulate and welcome the graduates of the Levitt School of Health to the stage. Please follow the marshals to be recognized individually. Megan Fest. Cheryl Oliver. Carol Ross. Jocelyn Becerra. Cicely Overton. Abby Gaff. Heidi Peterson. Amanda Woodard. Thank you, Prefer. Ricky Self. Patricia Goff. Kalina Duran. Noel Dobrowulski. Ashley Fuller Seagraves. Carolyn Timmer. Amazing. 
Nicole Sharp. Pauline Hale. Cheryl Murray. Ronaldo Cabuhat. Rebecca Eua. Justin Firstead. Charlotte Toons. Mary Rebecca Hildebrandt. Miranda Collins. Nicholas Muir. Shelby Reisner. Patricia Nanaga. Teresa Skinner. Rebecca Nickel. Jessica Prizer Cox. Donna Burks. Bethany Stiles. Cassandra Rich. Marilyn Johnston. Helen Patrice Alexander. Deborah Lawson. Jocelyn Tolliver. Suzette Davis. Jillian Edwards. Angelina Gunn. Allison White. Stephanie Schaefer. Sheila Curtis. Amber Miller. Amy Campbell. Charlotte Hamley. Gwendolyn Masterson. Cassandra Herbst. Ashley Barnhill. Lindsay Craig. Lydia Hernandez. Jill Bays. Jessica Kitterman. Kristen Zucano. Jessica Norman. Amanda Norris. Diana Dilly. Joni Moyer. Paige Stilson. Keisha Garber. Melissa Timberlake. Sarah Thompson. K. 
Michaela Kellams. Tammy Cripe. Jenna Lehman. Ashley Raddick. Lori Miller. Pia Blackwell. Lisa Doro. Jacqueline Joswiat. Brenda Dishinger. Stephanie Grimes. Kelly Russell. Janae Hancock. Pulmileo Olayton. Moriah Brown. Amala Augustine. Aaron Askins. Jenna Diaz. Julie Carpenter. Amy Draper. Lauren Block Baird. Leslie Taylor. Diana Lee. Courtney Heffelfinger. Jeno Charles. Sarah Courtney. Sherelle Williams. Bethany Crabtree. Congratulations to the graduates of the Levitt School of Health. To the graduates of the College of Information Technology, you are the creators, managers, and defenders of the data, apps, and devices that make all of our lives better. Please come forward so that we may celebrate your accomplishment. Nicholas Wagner. Oma Gimere. Jeffrey Newbaum. Naaman Miles. Kelly Evernich. Tony Trainer. Brandon Bosart. Victor Lee. Peter Kizito. Nicholas Flannery. Kimberly Powell. Andrew Stein. Andrew Groman. 
Richard Washbaugh. Jai Sharp. Solomon Fizaha. Olufun Shar Faletti, and happy birthday. Jeremy Rowe. Ronnie Stout. Omar Hiri. Jesus Gonzalez Nava. Christopher Hawkinson. Andrew Newman. Joe Helly. William Carter III. Manzar Hassan. Constantin Shibangu Bayeo. Sandra Sheets. Kojo Ose Babie. Lee Wolf. Geraldine Kembambara. Princess Oladipo. Congratulations to the graduates of the College of Information Technology. Good morning, School of Education graduates. Well done. Will you please rise and follow the instruction of the marshals and come forward and be recognized for your amazing accomplishments. Alexandria Trendell. Cisse Lytul. Jacqueline Jones. Emily Jean Marcus. Madison Cashin. Cassie Mosier. Sarah Crawford. Emily Lindstrom. Brianna Divins. Aaron Cress. Jared McLeland. Joelle Press. Autumn Rose. Debbie Wagner. Carrie Wood. Gail Scala. Keep going. Come on now. Michelle Wabshaw. Nicole Connolly. Kendra Simpson. Derek Hakes. Hakes. 
Amanda Workman. Denise Barker. Madison Allen. Jennifer Durant Matos. Abigail Barham. Celia Whitler. Jenna Schomburg. Martha Beck. Caitlin Hemmert. Mary Phillips. Michelle Smith. Cynthia Brumbarger. Katrina Smith. Sarah Miller. Catherine Byers. Amanda Namutora. Amy Rowe. Jaquea Foster. Autumn Perkins. Ryan Adams. Loretta Shepard. Andrew L. Murphy. <laughs> Kathy Eastus. Matthew Deneen. Vicenci Isidro de Souza. Lauren Prosser. Nancy Stein. Amelia Manwaring. Elizabeth Ross. Anna Tonarelli. Meredith Harshberger. Taylor Williams. Caitlin Sergi. Sarah Daughtry. Laura McDaniels. Desinage Fritz. Valerie Jakowski. Zachary Brown. Ashley Kenny. Mami Abba Yen. Riley Powers. Kara Lorenz. Jordan Michelle Ray Guzman Craig. Katrina Cotalis. Christy Morrison. Allison Cresilius. Jasmine Spore. 
Jessica Barrera. Temayanti Nagulas Rama. Pacharapon Raiden. Naisha Barnes. Julia Raiden. Alicia Gordon. Carrie Ramsey. Phyllis Hodson. Congratulations to the graduates of the School of Education. Congratulations, graduates. As we conclude our ceremony, I'd like to take this moment to recognize and thank those of you wearing blue and gold philanthropy cords today. I want to thank you for your generosity and your support of WGU's Fellow Night Owl Scholarship. Philanthropy cords are not only a physical symbol of a graduate's commitment to WGU, but they also support a legacy that will last for generations to come. Thanks to the incredible support of these alumni and thousands of alumni before them, more than $200,000 has been raised for the Fellow Night Owl Scholarship. And, and this generosity has helped 175 students cross the finish line to graduation. Night Owls helping Night Owls. Thank you for your support, and thank you so much for helping your fellow Night Owls succeed. For many of you, earning your diploma is the fulfillment of a lifelong goal. The degree you've earned at WGU will create new pathways to opportunity. But it's important to remember that as they say, commencement is not the end. It represents a new beginning. Whatever you choose to do, know you'll do it well, and great things will follow. You've already demonstrated many wonderful abilities, and I look forward to seeing what each of you achieve in your next chapter. It's also important to remember that learning is a lifelong journey. As you continue your journey, I encourage you to help and support others who are pursuing their dreams to also seek out meaningful ways to serve your communities and to follow your dreams. Your strength and resilience during uncertain times will add tremendous value to your families and your workplaces and your communities. As we close today, I hope you'll take a moment to reflect on the pride you felt as this ceremony went on and as you cross the stage and as you step out into your new beginning. Thank you for letting us each be part of your educational journey. As you celebrate, please share your excitement on social media using hashtag WGUgrad. And please do, because I love to love and heart every one of them. <laughs> this concludes our ceremony. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. Enjoy your day.
Thank you. 